Over this and the next few lessons, we're going to work our way through the anatomy of NURBS curves whilst learning where all the knobs and dials are within the Houdini nodes and viewport controls to work with them. So I'm going to start by drawing a curve and I'm going to draw this in the top view. So I'll hover my cursor over the viewport and tap space plus the two key to switch to the top view. And I'll select the curve tool from the create shelf tab and I'll tap the X key to bring up my snap menu. And in here I'll choose grid snapping. I'm going to leave the curve primitive type set to polygons for now. And I'll just snap to the points on this grid to create a sawtooth pattern. And I'll hit enter to finish drawing the curve and we see we've got a number of points connected by a single polyline. Now I'll change the curve primitive type from polygon to NURBS and I'll do that up here in the operation control toolbar and now we see that those points are no longer connected by a polyline but by a curve which is smoothly interpolating between those points and it's not actually traveling through them. If I dive inside this geometry node and bring up the node info for this curve node we can see that the primitive type is a NURBS curve. A NURBS curve is defined by what are called control vertices, together with parameters which exist on the curve. With NURBS curves in Houdini, just like with any other primitive type, the control vertices are attached to the points. And it's the points that we manipulate to define the position in space for the different parts of the curve. If I turn on vertex display, we can see clearly that the vertices are attached to the points. So the control points to which the control vertices are attached define the positions in space for the curve. If I select to move a point on this curve, we see that I'm manipulating the position of that point on the curve, but the curve never actually travels through the point. It's as though the point has a magnetic pull on the curve at that location. And I'm actually just gonna turn off grid snapping, which I'll do by tapping the X key to bring up the radial menu and I'll deselect grid snap. The way that the curve interplays between these points is influenced by a few different things. We have what's known as the order, which specifies how many control vertices are affecting the shape of the curve at any given point along the curve. We can assign a weight value to each control point, which specifies how much pull or influence each control point has on the curve. And then we also have parameter values, which are essentially coordinates on the surface of the curve which defined a relationship between the curve and the control vertices. Over the next few lessons, we're gonna cover each one of those influencing factors, but for now, we're just gonna take a quick look at the components of a NURBS curve. So I'm gonna turn on my primitive hulls display by clicking on this button here in the display options toolbar, and now we see we get a straight line connection drawn between the control points. Whichever primitive type we're working with in Houdini, we always have this same core set of components that we work with points, edges, primitives, and vertices. At the moment, I'm selecting and moving these control points using the handle tool whilst I'm within this curve node. But if I tap the S key to switch to selection mode, I can just use the standard point selection method. And now if I tap the T key to switch to the move tool and move this point, we see that Houdini drops down the same edit node that we use for direct manipulation of polygon components. If we switch to edge selection mode, we see that I can select one or more primitive hulls but I can't select a segment of the curve itself using edge selection. If we remember that an edge in Houdini is really just a straight line connection drawn between two points, and that's exactly what the primitive hulls are. They're just the connections from one point to another, but in the case of working with NURBS and Bezier primitives, they serve as control edges rather than being part of the actual resulting geometry. So for example, if I select this single edge here, I can transform this using the standard transform tools. So I'll tap the E key to switch to the scale tool and we can see that I can scale this edge to move those two connector points towards or away from each other along that connection axis. The edge itself is really just serving as a control handle to adjust the position of the control vertices, which ultimately affects the shape of the curve. If I tap the four key to switch to primitive selection mode, we see that clicking anywhere on the curve selects the whole curve. And that's because with the NURBS curve, just like any other curve primitive type in Houdini, the entire curve is a single primitive. We can still select vertices on a NURBS curve, but it's not something we're going to be doing very often because as we know, it's the points which we manipulate to define the position in space of those vertices. Now, NURBS and Bezier curves have a fifth geometry component, which polygons don't have, and that's breakpoints. And I can switch to breakpoint selection mode by enabling this breakpoints button in the operation control toolbar here. Now I can select one or more of those breakpoints on the curve. And if I hit the T key to switch to the move tool, 
I can move that breakpoint around and Houdini automatically moves the control vertices to the relevant positions to provide that shape on the curve. Breakpoints are also commonly referred to as knots, edit points and gravel points. Within Houdini we pretty much just stick to calling them either breakpoints or knots. But if you're coming from another application you may be used to either edit points or gravel points. And so I just want to point out that they're the same thing. The sections of the curve between the breakpoints are called spans. We're going to be going into detail about what exactly breakpoints are and how we work with them in a few lessons time, so I'm not going to talk any more about them right now. What we're going to be focusing on over the next couple of lessons before we get to breakpoints is the way that we can work with control vertices to define the shape of a NURBS curve. 